low emission vehicles. I don't want to waste time, so I'm moving straight on to the next item of business, a statement by Nicola Sturgeon on the conclusion of judicial review. The First Minister will take questions at the end of her statement, so there should be no interventions or interruptions. I call on Nicola Sturgeon. First Minister, please. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, on the 16th and 24th of January 2018, the Scottish Government received two formal complaints of alleged misconduct by Alex Salmond during his time as First Minister. Those complaints came from two separate individuals. The complaints were investigated under the procedure for handling of complaints involving current or former ministers, which I will refer to from here on as the procedure. As members are aware, that procedure was signed off by me and came into force in December 2017. As part of that procedure, I formally delegated responsibility for investigating complaints of this nature to the Permanent Secretary. The new procedure formed part of a wider review of Scottish Government policies and processes for addressing inappropriate conduct that the Permanent Secretary was asked by the Cabinet to undertake in the wake of the Me Too allegations. Uh, that review, of course, was confirmed to Parliament by John Swinney on the 31st of October 2017. In August 2018, following the conclusion of the investigation into the complaint raised about his conduct, Alex Salmond sought a judicial review of the procedure and the way in which it had been applied to him. Uh, this morning, the Court of Session accepted a joint minute from the Scottish Government and Alex Salmond settling the action for judicial review. Uh, the Permanent Secretary issued a statement earlier today detailing the reason for the decision to settle this case and I think it's also appropriate for these matters to be set out uh, at least in summary to uh, Parliament. Uh, therefore, as far as I am able, in light of the terms of the settlement and uh, perhaps more importantly the ongoing police investigation, I will seek to provide Parliament in this statement and in the questions to follow with as much detail as I can. The decision to settle the case was taken by the Permanent Secretary with my support when it became clear that in one procedural respect only, albeit an important one, the application of the procedure uh, could be perceived to have been flawed. In November 2018, Mr Salmond adjusted his petition for judicial review to advance a ground of challenge based on interaction between the complainants and the person who was subsequently appointed as investigating officer before the complaints were formalised. In late December 2018, the work being undertaken to produce relevant documents to the court in advance of the full hearing that was scheduled for next week led the government to reassess its position in relation to that ground of challenge in light of the full picture uh, which was then available. After reassessing all the materials available, the Permanent Secretary concluded that an impression of partiality could have been created based on one specific point, contact between the person appointed as investigating officer and the two complainants in advance of and around the time of their complaints being formalised in January 2018. Uh, this prior contact was in the form of welfare support and guidance, which was provided to the women making complaints. And I think it is important to stress, presiding officer, that this support and guidance was in itself entirely legitimate and indeed entirely appropriate. As we set out in the court of session this morning, the government does not accept claims that this was in any way encouraging uh, the complaints, nor is there any suggestion that the investigating officer did in fact act in a partial way or that either the investigation or the decisions reached were in fact partial. The Scottish Government is also confident that, that in all other respects, the procedure which was followed was fair to all concerned. However, as uh, members will be aware, it is a well-established principle that a process such as this must not just be impartial in fact, it must also be seen to be so. It is on that basis that the Permanent Secretary decided to settle the case and to agree that the decisions she reached about the complaints at the conclusion of the investigation should, on that ground alone, be set aside. It is important to note, uh, as a simple matter of fact, that today's settlement has no implications one way or the other for the substance of the complaints or for the credibility of the complainants. 
The judicial review was never about the substance of the complaints. It was about the process of investigating those complaints. It will be open to the Scottish Government to reinvestigate these complaints, subject, of course, to the views of the complainants. Uh, but for reasons that I'm sure the Chamber will understand, this will be considered only when the ongoing police investigation has concluded. Presiding officer, it remains my view that the government was right to begin an investigation when serious complaints were made and not allow them to be swept under the carpet because of the identity of the person complained about. And while in this one respect, the operational application of the procedure was flawed, the Scottish government considers the procedure itself to be robust and it does remain in place. However, the Permanent Secretary has rightly instructed a review of the procedure's application in relation to the specific point which has arisen in order to ensure that employees can have confidence in the process that will be applied should there be a need in future to investigate complaints about ministers or former ministers. Uh, there is one final point about the process that I wish to make in light of today's developments. Uh, the government has not at any time made public either the outcome of the investigation or the substance of the complaints and that will remain the case. As I have already uh, briefly mentioned and members will appreciate, there is an ongoing police investigation that must be uh, allowed to take its proper course. The government could also, as I have uh, just observed, reinvestigate these complaints in due course. So in these circumstances, it would not be appropriate for me or anyone else for that matter to say anything at this stage about the substance of the complaints. Signing off, sir, questions have also been raised in the past about meetings I had with Alex Salmon during the investigation and so I want to address that issue now. I met with him on uh, three occasions on the 2nd of April last year at my home in Glasgow, on the 7th of June in Aberdeen ahead of the SNP conference and at my home on the 14th of July. I also spoke with him on the telephone on the 23rd of April and the 18th of July. I have not spoken to uh, Alex Salmond since the 18th of July. Uh, on the 2nd of April, he informed me about the complaints against him, which of course, in line with the procedure, the permanent secretary had not done and he set out his various concerns about the process. In the other contacts he reiterated his concerns about the process and told me uh, about proposals he was making to the Scottish Government for mediation and arbitration. However I was always clear that I had no role in the process and I did not seek to intervene in it at any stage. Nor indeed did I feel under any pressure to do so. In conclusion, presiding officer, it is uh, deeply <coughs> regrettable, perhaps uh, that is an understatement, uh, that as a result of a failure in the proper application of one aspect of the procedure, the Scottish Government has had uh, to settle this matter today. Uh, the Permanent Secretary has already uh, this morning apologised to all involved. In echoing that, I want to express my regret in particular for the difficult position that the complainants have been placed in. I know the Permanent Secretary has spoken directly to both women. Uh, I can only imagine how difficult the decision to raise concerns as well as the publicity around this investigation and the judicial review must have been for them in recent months. They had every right to expect the process uh, to be uh, robust and beyond reproach in every aspect of it and to reach a lasting conclusion. And I am sorry that on this occasion that has not been the case. It is fair to say that in recent months, all organisations have grappled with the challenge of ensuring fair and robust processes for the investigation of complaints, which can uh, sometimes be historic in nature. Uh, it is because we, uh, I personally, take that task uh, so seriously that the Scottish Government is determined to learn and apply lessons from this case so that any member of staff raising complaints in future can have confidence that every aspect of the process applied will be robust. Ensuring a robust complaints process is part of the responsibility of every organisation to provide a safe and respectful working environment. And I, as First Minister, am determined that the Scottish Government will live up to that responsibility. Uh, thank you.
Uh, the First Minister will now take questions on the issues raised in the statement. I intend to allow up to 20 minutes for questions, after which we must move to decision time. The help of members wish to ask questions. We're pressing the request to speak buttons now. And I call first Jackson Carlow. Mr Carlow, please. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. I note that this is the subject of an ongoing police investigation, which none of us must prejudice. And given the detail in the First Minister's statement, which we received just after 10 past four, we will wish to reflect further. Presiding officer, the First Minister rightly just mentioned the two complainants at the centre of this matter. And obviously the trouble is that good intentions towards complainants are worth little if the government can't meet basic standards of competence. Let's be clear, what we've witnessed today is deeply disappointing, a questionable investigation, and seemingly an SNP civil war played out at the taxpayer's expense to the tune of hundreds of thousands of pounds in legal costs. Now let me turn to some questions. Firstly, in November last year, the First Minister said this, I am absolutely satisfied that I, the SNP and the Scottish Government have acted entirely appropriately at all stages. Now we learn this wasn't the case. Why only two months ago was the First Minister confidently insisting she had got everything right? Did she just not know what was going on within her own office? Secondly, and I think of crucial interest today, Presiding Officer, paragraph 12 of the Scottish Government procedure presides, provides for the First Minister being involved at the conclusion of the process, only when the outcome of the investigation is complete. In the light of this, why was the First Minister involved in a series of meetings and phone calls with Mr Salmon, about which, with respect to the latter, we are only being told today for the first time? This seems completely inappropriate in terms of the guidance within the procedure that the First Minister herself said that she had signed off just months before. And finally, let me ask this. We've learned a lot in recent months about the need to support victims of sexual harassment. In the wake of today's events, does the First Minister think it more or less likely that complainants will have the confidence to come forward? If this is the example of the Scottish Government, what hope is there reassuring others? Does she not agree that above all else, having the confidence to come forward when issues like this arise must be something that people have total confidence in doing? First Minister. Can I thank Jackson Carlow for his questions? I'm, I'm going to, um, I, I hope he uh, will understand, not uh, respond to the more uh, sort of uh, blatant political uh, elements to that, because I don't actually think it, it's appropriate. Some of his comments about civil war are, are simply ludicrous, and I, I don't think, uh, if I was to respond on that basis, would do justice to the seriousness of the matter uh, at hand. Uh, let me turn to the, the serious questions. Uh, firstly, Jackson Carlow asked about uh, complainants. I think it is absolutely essential that we keep uh, the interests of complainants at the heart of this. Uh, the Scottish Government took steps, as did many other organisations, to put in place a procedure for dealing uh, with complaints of harassment, including uh, complaints of sexual harassment. That procedure, in my view, is robust uh, and remains in place. Uh, in one aspect of the application of that procedure, the Scottish Government processes have fallen short, and I deeply, uh, deeply regret that. And that is something the Scottish Government has to reflect seriously on, and that is something the Scottish Government has got to be determined to learn lessons about. Uh, in terms of, uh, Jason Carlow uh, quoted uh, something I said, I uh, won't uh, quote it back because I don't have the exact terms, but to the effect that I was satisfied with the actions that the SNP, I and the Scottish Government uh, had taken. This is an investigation that has nothing to do with the SNP, so I'll uh, refer to myself and to the Scottish Government. At that point, um, I believed that was the case. And today, with the uh, exception of the one aspect that the Government has conceded uh, was flawed, I, I still believe that all of the aspects of the application of the procedure by the Government uh, was, was fair and robust. Now, that is no comfort to anybody because that one flaw has led to the decision today. Uh, Jason Carlo asked me, did I simply not know what was going on in, in my government? And here we get to the nub of it. I did not know what was going on in the investigation because the procedure said I shouldn't know what was going on in the investigation. Uh, I was informed by the investigation, yes, by Alex Salmond, but uh, I did nothing to intervene in that process as a result uh, of any uh, of that. And that is, I, I think, an important point um, and one that I am very clear on. Uh, lastly, in terms of does this make it more or less likely for complainants to come uh, forward? Uh, I 
I'm absolutely clear that my responsibility and the government's responsibility is to make sure that we encourage, enable, empower people with complaints to come forward by putting in place robust procedures uh, and by doing everything we can to make sure those pro processes are beyond reproach. If mistakes are made, uh, as uh, a mistake was made in this case, uh, in good faith, but nevertheless a mistake was made, it is absolutely incumbent that lessons are learned in order uh, that we can ensure collectively uh, that we encourage anybody with a complaint to come forward and feel that that complaint is treated seriously and appropriately. Richard Leonard. Uh, can I thank the First Minister for advance sight of her statement? The First Minister cannot be held responsible for the actions of her predecessor, but she is, in the end, responsible for the actions of this government. And this government has let these women down badly. Let's be clear, it takes unflinching courage to step forward and challenge powerful men and powerful institutions, which is why they deserve so much, so much better than this. It's also why it's paramount that their treatment, their access to support and representation and their access to justice must be a priority. This is a question of competence, but it is also a question of trust. If this government cannot be trusted to deal competently with a case involving a former first minister of this country, what trust and confidence can other women have in this government's handling of their complaints of harassment? This is extremely serious. So apart from a review of procedures, what further action is the First Minister now prepared to take to restore trust, to restore, restore confidence in her government's handling of present and future harassment complaints? First Minister. Well, can I thank Richard Leonard uh, for his questions? And can I say, firstly, I, I am responsible for the Scottish Government. That's why I'm standing here accountable to Parliament uh, in the right and proper way. Notwithstanding, in this case, because of the procedure, I was not personally involved in the conduct of the investigation. But nevertheless, I uh, absolutely accept my responsibility to uh, answer these questions. And also now, uh, given uh, the error that has led to the situation we are in today to make sure uh, that appropriate steps are taken to learn and apply any lessons that are required. I've said already, I uh, will say again, I deeply regret the position that uh, two women uh, have been placed in and that uh, is incumbent on not just me, but the government in its entirety uh, to make sure that we give confidence to women in future, uh, that if they come forward with complaints, and not just women, if anybody comes forward with complaints, those complaints are treated seriously and the processes applied are robust. Part of that uh, responsibility is to be clear, not to, to try to make excuses, but to be clear in fact uh, of certain uh, things and not allow those to be lost. The government has put in place a procedure that is robust in all bar one aspect, which of course is important because it has led to the situation we're in today, but in every other aspect, the government is confident that those, uh, that procedure was applied correctly. In terms of the error that was made, the review that has been uh, instructed today by the Permanent Secretary, I think it is important to allow that to happen and not to preempt uh, any conclusions of that, but I uh, will happily give an undertaking today to report back to Parliament on the uh, outcome of uh, that review and any steps that are being taken as a, a result of that. Uh, finally, I, I think I said in my statement, the Permanent Secretary has uh, spoken to the two women involved uh, to uh, apologise, uh, to offer support. It will be open in the future for the Scottish Government, uh, dependent on the views of the complainants to reinvestigate these complaints, but of course that consideration has to await the conclusion of the police investigation. Uh, I understand the Permanent Secretary has uh, spoken to or is speaking to, uh, in the course of today, uh, trade unions in order to give assurances there about how these complaints uh, will be taken forward. I uh, don't want anybody in this chamber uh, to be in any doubt about how seriously uh, I uh, treat uh, this situation. Uh, I uh, think it is incredibly important that people have confidence in processes and it is because of that uh, that I uh, feel uh, so uh, regretful at what has happened here today and feel uh, the responsibility, uh, not just for what has happened, but to take whatever action is required uh, to ensure that 
situations like this cannot happen again in future and I will uh, undertake to keep Parliament uh, fully updated as that review takes place. Willie Rennie. Uh, what must be protected in the midst of all this heat is the rights of people to speak up. Big progress was made with the Me Too movement. It gave people who had been silent for so long the confidence that they would be heard. It is important that nothing today stops that. And this parliament should stand together, should speak with one voice on that important issue. This is not a victory for anyone. I understand the civil service procedure was flawed, but does the First Minister agree that the police must be allowed to get on with their work free from political pressure? Well, can, First I thank, can I thank Willie Rennie uh, for that question? I agree entirely with the sentiments and indeed the substance of it. Can I, I, I don't want to sound uh, pedantic here. There's one point I, I feel it's important to stress, partly in the interest of what Willie Rennie is saying. The Scottish Government's procedure has, is not flawed. The application of that procedure in one respect uh, we concede was flawed. And I know that perhaps sounds as if I'm uh, nitpicking there, but I think it is an important distinction. Um, Willie Rennie is absolutely right that I think a lot of progress has been made since the Me Too uh, allegations came to light. Uh, sometimes, and I'm not talking about this case, it feels as if with uh, every step forward, we sometimes take a step back in all of that. Uh, but it is really important that we all encourage and make people feel that they are able to come forward. And that's why I do regret so uh, deeply what uh, has unfolded today. I think Willie Rennie is right to say this is not a victory for anybody. Uh, this has no implications one way or the other for the substance of the complaints. Uh, and it is important for all of us to recognise uh, that there is a police investigation underway and it is incumbent on all of us to ensure that we don't say anything that may impinge on that investigation. And that investigation, in the interest of everybody concerned here, is allowed to properly take its course. Uh, thank you. I have nine members wishing to ask questions. For obvious reasons, I let them, uh, these first questions um, and answers go on for longer. I don't think I'll reach them all, but if I have short questions, we should get through most of them. I'll call Ruth McGuire, followed by Annie Wells, please. Presiding officer, we live in a society where women and girls regularly experience harassment and sexism, whether on the street, in social settings, or indeed in their workplace. What would the First Minister say to these women and girls to give them confidence that society can change? And what should we all do, men and women, to stand up to those that perpetrate such harassment? First Minister. Well, I think Ruth McGuire raises the, the most important issue at the heart of this general uh, debate. Uh, first of all, we all of us, and I think all of us in this chamber, uh, do uh, make absolutely clear that harassment uh, against women and girls is completely unacceptable and should not be tolerated. Uh, secondly, we must make sure that the correct procedures are in place for dealing with that and uh, pertinent to this case, and this is where the Scottish Government has not got it right, that every aspect of the application of those procedures is robust and correct as well. And I think the last thing I would say, and it's uh, a responsibility that I feel very acutely today, uh, when mistakes are made, uh, there is a recognition of that, uh, a transparency around that, and a determination to make sure that we recognise that in order that the process of putting uh, right and learning the lessons of those mistakes helps us, rather than sets this back, actually helps us to encourage women to come forward in the future. And that's what I am determined to seek to do. Annie Wells, followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you. Um, I know the Permanent Secretary has spoken to these two women at the centre of this today. But can I ask the First Minister what support the Scottish Government will offer these women in the future? First Minister. Uh, the Scottish Government uh, will, and uh, as I said, as Annie Wells has uh, recognised, the Permanent Secretary has already spoken to them, the Scottish Government will offer any support uh, that they require. I should say one of the, uh, I don't know if this is the right word, it's, it's the word I will use, one of the ironies of this is that it was the giving of support to the women that has led to this situation. The support that was given to the women uh, before their complaints were formalised was entirely legitimate and appropriate. Uh, the problem was that the person, or one of the people, because uh, not the only person, one of the people uh, involved in the process of giving that support subsequently became the investigating officer, and that created the impression uh, of partiality, although there is nothing to suggest actual partiality. Uh, so the women will be offered uh, whatever support they need. In due course, as I've said a number of times now, uh, the reinvestigation of these complaints is an option, uh, but that consideration requires to await uh, the end of the police investigation. Thank you. Stuart McMillan, followed by Rhoda Grant. 
Thank you, President Officer. Can the First Minister be clear that the outcome of the decision today uh, by the Court of Session is not an issue of guilt or innocence, but a matter of the process of handling a complaint not being properly carried out? And uh, can she confirm that immediate and urgent steps are being taken to ensure that lessons have been learned and that staff can be confident of the procedures in place? First Minister. Um, well, as, as I said in my statement, it, not, not just this judicial review, but the lawyers amongst us in particular will, will know judicial reviews are, are not about the substance of issues. They are about the processes applied in a particular case. And that is uh, the situation here. This judicial review, even had it not uh, ended the way it ended today and had gone to the full hearing that was scheduled for next week, would never have been about the substance. So to use Stuart McMillan's language, this is not about guilt or innocence. Uh, the what has happened today is regrettable. It's regrettable from the perspective of Alex Salmond as well as the complainants. Uh, everybody involved had a right to expect that this process in all respects uh, was robust. But there are other processes underway as has already been acknowledged and it's very important uh, that those processes are allowed to take their course. Uh, lastly, in terms of uh, lessons learned, I've uh, already mentioned the review that the Permanent Secretary has instructed. I, as I said to Richard Leonard, I'm not going to preempt uh, what that might, uh, the direction that might go in, uh, but I will ensure that that is thorough uh, and I'll ensure that that happens as quickly as possible and that Parliament is kept fully updated. Rhoda Grant, followed by Emma Harper. There have been long-standing concerns about the Scottish Government's transparency. We now know the First Minister has spoken to Alex Salmon on five separate occasions, none of which are referenced in her diaries. Can I ask if she will now make the content of these meetings public, and if not, why not? First Minister. Well, the, 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 the contacts I had with Alex Salmon, and I've set out uh, the dates of these today, were not government meetings. I, I've you know, I've known as a friend and colleague Alex Salmon for 30 years. He was, uh, he's not at the, this present time, but he was then a member of my party. People can make uh, judgments on the decisions I took. Uh, one of the things I found out in the course of this, there's no manual for suddenly finding yourself dealing with uh, a situation where uh, somebody that you have worked with in that way uh, is subject to these uh, accusations. Uh, but I was very, very firm, and I have set out the the first meeting, it was him informing me of the complaints. After that, he was making me aware of the concerns uh, that he had about the process and uh, that he was proposing mediation and arbitration at no point. And this is the key principle for me. I had no role in this process. Uh, I uh, did not intervene or seek to intervene. Self-evidently, I didn't, because what he was seeking did not happen and that is the important principle uh, and one that I am absolutely satisfied uh, around uh, and I uh, today not just on this issue but on uh, the more general issue I I'm anxious to be as transparent as possible uh, uh, within the confines of an ongoing investigation and of course uh, as we move uh, down and, and out of uh, investigations uh, if there is more information that the government can make available to parliament then of course we will do so. Emma Harper, followed by Donald Cameron. First Minister has just taken a question about support for the complainants, and I agree with offering support. Is it possible that this support could be provided from a third party if the women prefer? First Minister. Uh, yes, I'm sure that is possible. Um, I will certainly feed that uh, back, and uh, any support that not just these women, but anybody within the Scottish Government who has concerns or issues about any uh, minister, former minister or other member of staff in the Scottish Government, I think should be offered appropriate support. And if that is from outside the Scottish Government, I think that is something that should be considered. Last question, Donald Cameron. Thank you. Uh, paragraph 12 of the procedure explicitly provides for the involvement of the First Minister only when the outcome of the investigation is complete. That being so, why did the First Minister consider, consider it appropriate to meet with Alex Salmond not once, but three times, have two telephone calls whilst the investigation was ongoing. First Minister. Um, I've said a, uh, a response to that already, but can I just make very clear, I was not involved in the procedure. I was not involved in any way in the procedure. I did not intervene uh, in the procedure. I did not seek to intervene. Uh, I did not uh, try to influence the course of the investigation. Had I uh, done so, uh, that would have been uh, the subject of absolutely legitimate criticism. Uh, you know, all of us reflect on 
uh, decisions we take all of the time, and I'm sure that will be no different for me in this circumstance as it is on everything else, but I am absolutely satisfied that I uh, acted uh, appropriately and will continue to do so. Uh, thank you. That concludes questions on the statement. I apologise to Bill Kidd, Daniel Johnson and Rona Mackay, whom I failed to reach. And we will now move on to decision time. Thank you. And we turn straight to decision time. The first question is that amendment 15243.3 in the name of Jamie Green which seeks to amend motion 15243 in the name of Michael Matheson on ultra-low emission vehicles be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that amendment 15243.4 in the name of Colin Smith, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Michael Matheson be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that amendment 15243.1 in the name of John Finney, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Michael Matheson be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. The next question is that amendment 15243.2 in the name of Lee MacArthur, which seeks to amend the motion in the name of Michael Matheson, be agreed. Are we all agreed? No. We're not agreed. We'll move to a vote, and members may cast their votes now. And the result of the vote on amendment number 15243.2 in the name of Liam MacArthur is yes, 50, no, 67. There were no abstentions and the amendment is therefore not agreed. So the final question is that motion 15243 in the name of Michael Matheson as amended on ultra low emission vehicles be agreed. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are agreed. And that concludes decision time. We'll move in a few moments to members' business in the name of Brian Whittle on transport infrastructure in southwest Scotland. We'll just take a few moments for members to change seats and for the ministers to change seats too.